Hi everyone, it's Tanya Hertz here and I'm going to be talking to you now about the interview paper and uh, some of the logistics involved with that. Uh, please try to follow the instructions pretty closely on this so that you can earn the highest grade possible so that you can um, have a, a good paper and it helps me as well when I'm going through and, and grading these uh, so that I can grade apples to apples. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen with you and we'll pull this up together. This is the PowerPoint uh, located uh, it's there online for you. And uh, there's also a rubric and there is a template that you can use. So the paper itself uh, is like I said, to try to, it's pretty important that we try to uh, stay on task and, and follow the guidelines as, as much as possible. Please try to keep it under two pages. Uh, if you go significantly over two pages, uh, let's say two and a half or more pages, you will be marked down for, for going over um, exceeding the, the guidelines. And that's just because uh, we really want to get used to writing as concisely and clearly as possible. And I promise you, it's more difficult to convey everything that you want to convey in a small space than it is uh, in, in a longer paper, given all the time that you need. So this is really going to take some, some skill to, to get that down to two pages. And that's single spaced. Uh, the title page doesn't count towards your overall page count. And again, in that title page, I'd love it if you keep it uh, very systematic and follow the instructions as to what we'd like to see on the title page. The introduction is, uh, does count towards the page count. Uh, the introduction, we, we want that introduction to be an introduction to the paper, not an introduction to um, concepts or to entrepreneurship or to um, any anything else by that I mean tell us what the paper is the purpose of the paper and who you're interviewing not any number of other things that I've seen in introductions um, <clears throat> the, excuse me <clears throat> the body of the paper includes the three sections of that we have listed here and I'd like you to use headers so uh, basically a headline for each of the section and uh, if you could please use these headers specifically so that I can find the information quickly and so can anyone else who's reading the paper. Now, um, the conclusion is, is essentially a reiteration of the introduction and I have a template for you in, in um, also in the, in the folder that uh, describes this assignment, but I will say you don't need to necessarily um, do things like include a, a table of contents, but it just, it helps. It helps uh, for you to find the information. That's why I have it there. But um, anything extra in there doesn't count towards the page count. When I'm saying two pages, that's just the body. Uh, that includes if you want to add um, additional photos. So I, I would, I do ask that you add at least one photo, uh, but if you, let's say you add uh, several photos uh, at the end of the paper to, to really are articulate the concept or to really show more about um, what you've done or, or the entrepreneur. I, I love pictures. Pictures are, are a great way to add value and they don't count towards the extra um, page count. Uh, we ask that you include a works cited page and that we'll talk about here in a bit and the transcript we will as well. Um, okay. Everything needs to be turned in on the due date. Please do your best to get it in by that date. If, um, you know, if you, if, if you didn't get it in on time, I'm not the kind of person who's going to say, oh, okay, then you don't get turned in it at all. And I will not give you any points towards this because, I mean, let's face it, this is real life and things happen in real life. However, I won't grade it if you don't tell me what happened and, and that it's there. And that's just because uh, once the, the due date passes and I've, I've downloaded it and, and have graded all of the assignments, I'm not going to go back in there and check every day or week, just hoping that somebody is going to turn something in late. Um, it, you can receive a zero still on the assignment if you don't tell me about it. All right, so who do you actually interview? Well, anyone who meets the definition of an entrepreneur. It, that could be any person that has ownership of a business. Uh, please um, 
avoid those entrepreneurs, the people who, who are entrepreneurial within existing companies, and just focus on, on the people who've started companies themselves. I'd love it if you could talk to people who are currently entrepreneurs, but it's just as valuable, sometimes more valuable, to talk to people who've had failed ventures. Right? So if somebody has started a company, um, as long as it's within the last 10 years, uh, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to read that, that paper as well. Um, and use your network. Lean on, on who, you, who you know and um, who you've met recently in entrepreneurship. And uh, you could, I mean, that could mean doing a paper, uh, a family member or um, a friend, somebody that you've met through this class, somebody that you've, uh, that you've seen give a presentation at this class. You know, reach out to that person on LinkedIn and see if they, they'll speak with you. Um, you have at your disposal right now something that is invaluable, and that is your student card, right? Play that student card. I have read papers that I was just shocked that the student got the interview with this person, and it was just, um, you know, just because they asked. They just said, hey, look, I'm a student, and I'm writing a paper. Would you um, do an interview with me? And, uh, you know, I've read, I've read interview papers with the CEOs of huge Fortune 500 companies. Uh, I mean, that's how uh, I've actually reached out to the, uh, the, the CEO of, of Walmart Labs, uh, you know, back when I was, um, back when I was in graduate school. And uh, I mean, it's just a question of, say, of asking, and then y you would be surprised how many people just say, yeah, sure, I can do that. I'd be happy to talk with you. Uh, so reach out to those people. Um, aim high on who you're, you're interviewing. You know, this can be a really valuable assignment or it can just be you know, something that you do. Uh, so you, know, use, you, you could use maybe one of your connections. I've, I've uh, seen people do interviews on family members and it was so meaningful to them. It was meaningful to the family members as well. Uh, and they, they've told me after the fact that they had no idea, they had no idea that that particular uh, person had struggled so much or done so many different things. And so you, you, I, I, I'm going to leave it to you. I'll leave it to your discretion as to who you interview. But, I, you know, you could, you could interview the CEO of a Fortune 500 or some freelance worker who's making, um, you know, homemade jewelry on Etsy. And I am fine with either. What I'd like is I'd like it to be valuable to you. You know, strive to get something that's, that's experience, experientially valuable, right? Something that interests you. So on that title page, again, doesn't count towards the page count and it has to have your name and the name of the entrepreneur and the name of the company that they started and the date that you interviewed them and how you interviewed them, right? Was it uh, an in-person interview? Was it uh, by email? Was it by a phone interview or a video call, Skype, Zoom? Any of those are fine. I just need to know which one of those it was. And then ask them questions about the business. How did they recognize the opportunity? How did they develop the opportunity? And be very specific about what you're asking and keep them in these sections. I want that heading about the business. And then, of course, I'll leave the discretion to you as to how you answer this question and very, or I'm sorry, ask this question and who knows how they'll answer it. Very often they go off on tangents. It's fine as long as we get, um, get to the core of how they actually started that business and then some of the challenges that they faced and, and how they solved the, the, the challenge. And this is often very, very interesting section on, um, on perseverance, on uh, strategy, on, on being okay with failure. And then ask them to give you some advice. Um, you know, you can ask them, would they do it again? Or what advice would they give to an aspiring entrepreneur? Uh, ask them if it's been rewarding. Ask them if, uh, if, they, if they could change something, what would it be? Uh, this is the section, this is my favorite section of the paper usually. And um, you get some great advice. You know, don't uh, delegate, don't do it all on your own. Um, quality, speed, price, you can only ever have two out of three, right? Uh, get a mentor, collaborate. Um, uh, bad news comes often, but it doesn't last. Um, ask people who are more experienced and need for advice. Hire slowly, fire fast, make meaning and money will follow. All of these are, are pieces of advice that I've gotten from the papers that I've read in the past and um, just 
such invaluable information out there. These people, they, they've been there, done that, and um, I love that they're willing to share. So uh, make sure that you include at least one photo of the entrepreneur. Uh, um, it can be of the business. Uh, uh, it can be of uh, him, him or herself. It could be you giving the interview. If it's, I, I now most of these, uh, I should have said this before. If we are um, under the social distancing orders, just don't do the interview in person. Don't do a face-to-face. -face. You can get so much great information from something like Skype or, uh, you know, Zoom or, you know, an email or a phone call, uh, whatever, whatever you like to do there, but you do need to get a photo somewhere. You can grab it from online. It can be a picture of the, like I said, of the business. And no matter what, if you didn't take the picture though, make sure that you say that, that you give credit to the uh, photographer that you actually cite that uh, photo. <clears throat> and there's instructions in the template as to how to cite a photo, but please, please, please cite that photo and please refer to the photo. There's nothing weirder than just having some photo in there with no description or no, um, you know, no reason for it being. Um, make sure that you were to say, like, for example, um, you could label this photo one and you could say, uh, here is a photo of the entrepreneur on opening day or something like this, right? So that we get what we're looking at. So I uh, just wanted to go over some of the basics of writing. Please use block paragraphs use the you follow your your business communication guidelines um, from your business comm class uh, you want to write in clear concise sentences uh, vivid statements always start with the with the topic statement and then support that assertion afterwards with with facts and evidence and every every paragraph starts this way right you start with the topic sentence you follow it up with the uh, with the support and they're very short in business Never, never more than a hundred words in, um, and and really the rule of thumb is is fifty to eighty words, but never more than a hundred. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say this enough. Keep your paragraph short, clear, concise. Nothing worse than a run-on paragraph. And um, you know we use the direct or deductive approach. You start with that topic sentence. It's called your primary thesis, and then you support that. Always use headings so we can find things quickly. And these are the the headers that we're using. The headings are about the business challenge faced, reflection advice, single spacing within the paragraphs, double spacing between. That means uh, you know there's a, there's a blank in between each paragraph so that I can see where the paragraphs are. You don't indent like you do in English classes, and the introduction and conclusion are there to tell us um, what the paper is about, not any other thing that you want to introduce or conclude upon. Um, uh, al.purdue.edu is an excellent source for citing. Y you can use it. And then, oh, the well is available and the writing center is available. So take advantage of the on-campus resources as well. They're free and they're so helpful. So here's an example of a paragraph that I wrote and I ask you to cite your sources. What I'd really like is I'd like you to have at least one source other than just the interview. So even if it is just the interview, you would still have, um, you know, you'd still have to cite the sources when you said something. And, um, but I'd like you to pull from at least one other place and then you cite that as well. So here's an example of a paragraph where I did some in-text citing as well as some, uh, you know, and then you also cite at the end. The one thing I wanted to show you this for was because when we're doing the interview, you don't actually have to put the year of the interview in for the, um, you know, for this particular paper, because the assumption that I have is that the interview was done this year. If that's not the case, sorry about that, if that's not the case, then you can put the year in. But other than that, I'm okay with it not having the year. So here's an example. I'll read it. I hate doing this, but Miss Key faced many challenges during the first year of starting her business. When I asked Miss Key, opla, when I asked Miss Key to elaborate on these challenges, she mentioned a lack of money as the most difficult and salient challenge. And then see here, I put in parentheses key. Now, if uh, normally I would put key, comma, 2020, but like I said, since I'm going to be reading probably let's see, I don't know, maybe over over 200 papers with all the different students in the classes, I, I definitely um, 
We don't need to have extra things in there. I know that everybody did the interviews this year. Okay, so then moving on this paragraph. This is a common problem faced by female entrepreneurs. In fact, a 2018 Babson report found that less than 3% of VC-backed firms had women CEOs. And then here I have the name Brush, the last name of the person who wrote that article for, for Babson. Uh, and I don't have the date there because I said the date in the article, right? Or in the in the paper so then how would i say that's the in-text citing so then how do you cite this at the end in the work cited well you go back there you do the last name comma first name you tell us how you cited it and then the date it's so simple right brush at all this is the name of the report and then it's the um the url so one thing about you about citing from websites please don't write out the big big old you the big old <laughs> the big you long url in the parentheses in the in-text citing because that that's not how it's done and it, it's just it's silly and it's uh, difficult to read instead you write the page that you got the um the citation from online and um for more instructions just go to the template it tells you exactly how to do that oh and by the way when you're when you're doing a citing of websites as of 2019 you don't you no longer cite the date that you um that you pulled the information or or visited the site use appropriate business terms uh, and make sure that you only use terms that you know what they mean don't misuse the terms um, use direct clear concise language like every business uh, writing that you'll ever do. Make sure that you have a very professional tone, that it's objective, that, excuse me, that it's free from excessive use of uh, personal pronouns like I or you. So instead of saying, um, you should do this, you, this, you, that, say uh, the entrepreneur or the employee or um, the supervisor, whoever the you is, right? Now you'll use sometimes I in this paper because it's uh, a personal interview, but excessive use of I makes it seem unprofessional. So yes, sometimes, but not, not a lot. Okay. Should be written at a college level with the reader in mind. So I'm assuming that all of you have taken your business comm classes, that you've taken some writing classes that you can write at a college level. Please, if you're not a great writer, take advantage of the resources out there that can help you to be a better writer. There's free resources on both uh, college campuses. There's resources uh, that you can, for free, that you can get uh, support online. There's proofreading apps. There's no excuse for you to turn in a paper that has not been uh, edited and proofridden and, and, and looked at by somebody other than just you. Okay. And um, when you're done, when you have it graded, I highly encourage you to um, actually share the report with, or the interview with the founder. And I might actually have, I might actually have this part of the assignment that you turn the paper into the entrepreneur and then send um, a thank you letter expressing thanks for them for giving the interview. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, let's just get the paper written. And just um, so you know, in the template here, I wanted to show you quickly, uh, in fact, no, I'll do another little quick video about the template. We'll talk to you soon.